When planting new trees, the experts agree on a few simple guides to keep in mind. Right tree, right place, and, and that's really the catchphrase for planting trees. Check with your area foresters, your local arborist, um, extension folks. Find out that you know what trees grow in this area, what ones are going to do good, and you know we don't recommend a lot of Bradford pears, silver maple, bald cypress because all those trees are fast growing. You know they have weak wood. Uh, they tend to be weedy trees. They you know spread and things, so they've got points to them that we don't want in an urban environment anymore. Here in Tennessee, there are some favorites for me. Uh, as far as the canopy tree goes, the tulip poplar, that's a beautiful native tree, that's our state tree. If you have room for it, it's a big tree, that's a great canopy tree. The oak trees are really good. Nut all oak, Schumard oak, uh, willow oak, and pin oak trees are very good selections here in, in Tennessee. I think the general rule of thumb is the right tree for the right place. Uh, we try to encourage people to plant the largest tree possible for a given space. Think long term, what is that tree going to look like 20, 30 years down the road? I had somebody call me some years ago and they planted a Canadian hemlock within two feet of, the, the, of their house and the tree was growing up uh, underneath the eave of the house. They said, what can I do? So I said, the answer that's very easy, move the house back 15 feet. The soil, the amount of space that's in the ground is very critical for street trees in a suburban setting. You want to have at least six to eight feet of grass strip for that tree to grow. Anything less than that and you're going to start competing with the sidewalk, with utilities and other things. The other thing that's very important in a suburban uh, street tree selection is the canopy. You want to make sure to have a nice upright canopy, something that's going to shape well over the years and isn't going to require a whole lot of pruning and conflict with trucks that are coming by on the street. That also goes for pedestrians that are uh, passing on the sidewalk. You'll get a, a selection of tree that you can prune up about 8 to 10 feet so that anybody walking underneath that tree, any car passing underneath that tree is not going to conflict with it. The tree that, that we see behind us is a maple tree. That's a fast growing tree so it's going to need a lot of room to grow. Lace bark elm and the willow oaks are also excellent street tree selections. As you're selecting a suburban street tree, you are providing an edge between yourself and the street and providing a place for people to experience that tree between the house, between the cars, giving them that pedestrian sense. Most communities either have an urban forester or um, have access to an urban forester through the uh, Tennessee Department of Agriculture Division of Forestry. So if you don't have one locally, you definitely have one regionally. Any one of these, either through West, Middle, or East Tennessee, are more than happy and willing to help a homeowner or builders and developers um, with choosing the right tree for the right place or um, with some kind of building and development plans. It's also important to properly care for trees so they can thrive on a new development site. The most important aspect of maintaining a tree is in its early years, when you first put it in the ground. When you first plant a tree, it's got to go through three phases. The first year it sleeps, the second year it creeps, and the third year it leaps. As a general rule, I like to say the first two growing seasons, um, you need to give that tree supplemental water. Um, and, and even longer if necessary, depending on drought conditions. So the first two or three years, you need to keep it watered, you need to keep it pruned, and come back and have an arborist look at it. And then after that three or four year period, the tree is gonna to start to take a natural shape and, and give you that benefit with a, with a lot less care that goes into it. You don't wanna create large uh, mulch volcanoes around the base of the tree. What's gonna happen is that mulch is gonna end up becoming placed up against the bark of the tree. And this is one of the biggest culprits for actually having pathogens and insects actually getting into the tree because that, that mulch is not meant to be against the bark of the tree. It's a, it should be pulled back away from the tree. And then the other thing is to protect your tree from lawnmower blight. So if you can, give it some type of protection, give it some type of edging. If you're dealing with a large tree, a mature tree, some of the things that you don't want to do is going to be to uh, top the tree. That, that's a horrible tree care practice. You don't um, spike the tree. You don't engage a tree care company where the tree climber wears spikes.
cities ought not to be enemies of nature. They ought to be compatriots with nature. And in so far as it can be done, cities shouldn't be places that cover up the good earth and, and prevent natural life from sprouting from it. Cities ought to reflect the foundation on which they built. We have an arboretum program where we certify arboretums across Tennessee. Uh, we have a landmark and heritage tree program where we want to remember, you know, these trees that have been here for so long. You know, if they could talk, they could really tell us some stories. These parks are part of lifelong recreation where any age, any ability can come and enjoy this park, whereas you have ball fields and stuff. It, it, it caters to a particular type of a person, you know, youth or adult sports, but this nature and, and a natural park caters to anybody. To me, a major tree in the inner city belongs to the neighborhood, to the inner city, not just to the property owner. Everybody loves trees. I haven't run into anybody yet that says, man, I hate trees. My, my grandfather on my mom's side had a mill in Alexandria, Louisiana, and my uh, grandfather on my dad's side had what was called the old Hyde Lumber Company in Memphis, so I got sawdust in my veins. Everybody remembers a tree in their backyard that they played in, I would think. Uh, I know specifically a big pine tree in the backyard that I climbed in. It was perfect the way the branches were lined up, and I remember climbing that tree for years and years and years. and built various uh, tree forts in that tree and spent a lot of time in it. My first memory is of my little sister falling out of the chinaberry tree and uh, <laughs> trying to climb as high as her brother had climbed, um, and uh, a swing in the yard uh, on a, a beautiful limb of, a, of an old oak tree, taking chairs out in the summertime and sitting under the tree, around the swing, and uh, rocking chairs. Original Those air conditioning. The original air conditioning, yeah. And we actually have some plants in our yard that came from our parents, from our mother's garden. And our daughter has a gardenia bush growing in her yard in Atlanta that came from her grandmother's garden. So it and sort of connects the generations. A lot of people love this park. We have always come here, me and my family. We walk the trails, we creek stomp, you know, throughout the summer months. You know, when it's real hot, we'll come down here and get in the creek. And, you know, so we want to protect that and we want to enhance it as much as possible. Trees become a very personal witness in a, in a timeline of, of watching many things change around them, but they're kind of the sentinels, if you will, uh, that see over time uh, many things may change, but they continue to function and provide, as a living organism, something that will transcend many different generations, many technologies, many different cultures may come and go. The tree is still doing what it was designed to do uh, when it was first put in the ground. To learn more about the benefits of trees for developers, visit the CumberlandRiverCompact.org or talk with a local landscape architect, urban forester, arborist, or a garden center. Talk with your site designer about what trees can do for you on your next project. We need more trees, and the trees on your next project count.